Hi guys, I'm Johnny Chivers. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a data engineer by trade with over 10 years experience working primarily Monday to Friday in the financial services sector. Five times AWS certified and I like nothing more in my free time than making videos for this very YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to take a beginner's guide look at AWS Glue. It's a very in-depth service, so we'll do a light bit of theory, and then what we'll do is crack in to an actual example on the console of setting up AWS Glue. So what is AWS Glue? AWS Glue forms part of that big data ecosystem in AWS. It's a serverless way that we can carry out ETL, that's extract, transform, and load, on data in AWS. We can move it from point A to point B. We can perform transformations in the middle. It can also move data from on-premise to AWS if you have the infrastructure set up in between, or the other way around from AWS back down the on-premise. It does this via Spark jobs, but a lot of it's abstracted from the end user. So there's no infrastructure that the end user has to manage to take advantage of the big data technology. AWS Glue has a couple of different components. There's the Glue Data Catalog that acts as the meta repository for the data. This is where we store information about like data location and its format, such as columns. Then we have AWS crawlers that we can use to actually run over data and populate the Glue Data Catalog. You can also manually add the information so you're not just stuck using crawlers. There's Glue ETL, which is actually where you write the code or AWS creates code for us to do the ETL. There's Glue jobs that run the ETL code. There's Glue triggers and workflows that are used to schedule the Glue jobs. And then there's even an inbuilt monitoring system in the new Glue Studio. And the Glue Studio as well has inbuilt features where it's a click and drag kind of system to set up Glue um, code without actually having to write that kind of Scala or PySpark if you don't want to. So as you can see, the ecosystem of Glue is really vast. But why use Glue ETL? Well. There's plenty of other services to do ETL with, including EMR in AWS, but that's a real headache of infrastructure. Plus you're paying for the cluster always being up when you're actually not using it all the time. But with AWS Glue, we don't have to manage this underlying infrastructure. It's handled for us, which means all we have to do is register the data in the Glue Data Catalog and then provide a script to run either in PySpark or Scala, or even more recently, AWS provides some of these scripts automatically generated. It also has a monitoring system built in alongside triggers and workflows where we can actually schedule jobs. So it's a one-stop shop where we can actually use ETL in the AWS ecosystem without a lot of overhead of infrastructure or setup costs. But when do we use AWS Glue? Well, we use it when we want to move big data or even small data around AWS in a cost-effective manner where we pay for it on demand without having to manage that infrastructure. So it really lowers the bar to entry in the big data ecosystem. In terms of today's lesson, what we would normally do at this point is a kind of loose, here's how the service works, or like a very skim over the top. The problem with AWS Glue is it's actually not one of those services. There's a bit of setup work to do before we can even ETL. There's already a Glue 101 series on this channel that has kind of four lessons on AWS Glue. What I'm going to do is put the first video lesson up now that uses the Glue Data Catalog to register some data that we use to ETL in the second one. Once you're finished with this lesson, you can jump on the lesson two of that series and then ETL. It's probably the best way to get the grips with glue and that way you can take a benefit of another lesson as well. So join me in the console and we'll set up the glue data catalog. Okay guys, that's me logged in to the AWS management console. First thing we need to do is set up an S3 bucket that's gonna act as our data repository for all the lessons. So let's go to S3 by typing in S3, clicking on the service and then going to create bucket. So remember your bucket in AWS has to be unique globally for every bucket ever created. So I tend to use my name just because it's not that common a name. And then I'm going to call this one demo glue uh, 101. So I'm going to work out in the North Virginia region today. And that is everything I believe we want to create the bucket. Okay. That's the bucket created. We're going to do a couple of more things inside this bucket. The first one is we're going to create a couple of folders. So create folder and we're going to call this input and we're going to create that folder. The next one we're going to call is output. So we're going to create an output folder. And the third one we're going to call is Athena. This is a bit of a bonus we'll do in later lessons, but let's just create the folder now. So we have Athena results create that folder. So we should have three folders now, input, output, 
and Athena results. So the input is where we're going to put our input data, the data we're going to upload in this lesson. And the output folder, it's going to act as where we put our output. So when we do the ETL in the next lesson, we'll be using the output folder. So the next step is to get some data into the input folder. Now, in the description below, there's a link to my GitHub. Inside Glue 101, I have a couple of artifacts. One is customer.csv, which is going to be our data that we use for this entire series. And I've also included an architecture diagram that explains a little bit about what we're doing. I drew it myself. Um, I'm not the best artist, um, but I think it kind of gets the point across quite well. So I'm just going to zoom out just a tiny little bit. And what we've done here in our S3 bucket at the moment is create input and create output. And I've put a dividing line down the bottom just so we can see what's going on. The next step is to upload that CSV data. So back on the GitHub, I'm just going to download this entire file as a zip. Down in my downloads, I'm going to double click it so it opens. And there she sits and we have all the artifacts. So back on to the S3 management console. Input, so input into the input folder, that's really important. And then we want to create another folder before we upload the data. And this will act as our table. So let's just call this customers. And then let's hit create folder. Then inside that folder, let's upload the data that we just downloaded. So inside here, we go add files and we add files as customer CSV. And we upload. And that's the data uploaded. So if we just close and we highlight, we can quickly take a look at this data by using query with S3 select. So just to leave everything as default and hit run query. And you can see that our first five rows are brought back for us. Fantastic. Okay. So let's go over to AWS Glue now, what we all came here for. So over on AWS Glue, first thing we're going to do is create a database. So on the left hand side here is our navigation plane. We have databases, tables, connections, crawlers, schema registries, settings, the whole ETL group down here, security, and there's even tutorials on how to add a crawler, how to add a job that we're going to cover in this lesson. So up at the top, we go to databases, this is going to be our database and I'm going to call it input. So a database is just a logical place that you put tables that go together. So this will be where we put our input tables and we only have one of them. That's our database created input. Simple as that. Now, if I just load up the diagram quickly again, you can see that we need to create a crawler to register this CSV in the glue data catalog. So as we spoke about at the start of this video, crawlers go over the data in first schema and register it with the glue data catalog. So back on the AWS console, we'll go to crawlers and we go to add crawler by either clicking this or up here. So I'll click up here. Okay, give your crawler a name. I'm gonna call this demo glue 101. You can call your crawler anything you want as long as it abides by the naming conventions. Uh, we're gonna crawl a data store. We're gonna crawl all folders. This option is kind of interesting if you're working with a lot of big data you can crawl new folders only so you don't keep crawling old folders um, a crawler actually scans all the data in your files to infer the schema so if you keep rescanning the same data and it's not changing it's a bit of a waste of money but for the purpose of this lesson we've only got one folder so we're just going to call it all folders next yep we're s3 it's a path in our account so we need to include that path so if you go find the bucket that you created and you go to the input location. We're going to crawl this input location, but actually I just want the customer table. So we're going to set it up over customers. So we're going to crawl the whole way down into customers and hit select. Then we're going to go next. Do we want to add another data store? The answer is no. We need a role. So we are just going to create a new role for this. So I'm going to call this glue 101 uh, crawler. And I'm just going to put delete on the end so I remember to delete it. So as you can see, it's going to have the permissions to scan that location and infer schema. Let's go next. Schedule, leave run on demand. We'll come back to this in the third lesson when we look at triggers. So let's click next. Database is input. And prefix, I'm just going to add CSV to the front of it. So our table is going to be prefixed with CSV. And that's just to make it more clear what the data type is. Next. And finish. 
and your crawler should be created. So now just highlight it and run crawler. So the crawler's off and running. This can take 60 seconds to three minutes. I'm going to pause the video here and then we can pick it up once it's done. Okay, as you can see, that took about 56 seconds in total runtime, but it actually took slightly longer than that because there's a start phase and a stop phase. So I think it was about two minutes in total. Um, if you get stuck, there is logs here to click and you can go and debug the crawler of the issues. But if you followed along the same steps that I've done, you'll get to this um, stage and everything will be completed successfully. Now, as you can see, a table has been added so that we, we got our one table back. Now, to view this table, we'll go in the long way. So you go databases, database that's called input, tables and input, and as you can see, we have our CSV customer table. Now, if we click on that table, you can see that there's a lot of information. And this is the power of a crawler. So as you can see, it knows that we're in a text output format here. You, it knows that our columns are ordered. It knows that there's 998 records up here. It knows to skip the first line because that's actually the column names. It also knows, as you can see, that it's a delimiter and it knows that it's a file type. So there's a lot of information just infer inferred by the actual crawler itself. And as you can see, this is actually what it used to parse the file. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that it's picked up all the column names in our file and it's inferred data type. So that's just out of the box functionality by AWS. So in recap of what we've done today, we have created this S3 bucket in the middle. We have created these input and output folders. We've created a customer folder inside input. We've uploaded the CSV data. We've ran a crawler over it and we've registered that table with the glue data catalog. So as a bonus, we can actually view this data in Athena. Now this isn't part of Glue itself, so feel free to go on to the second lesson now or follow along and we can actually look at this data in AWS. So if we go to the top and we type in Athena, and I'm just gonna open it in a new tab to keep things separate, we can go to get started. And as it's the first time that we've been in here, you need to set up a query location. So that can be done here or via settings. So if you click settings, query and he's a query result location. If we go to the bucket that we set up, we set up that third folder at the start that was just a bonus folder. So we're gonna go into it and we hit select and we hit save. As you can see, the glue data catalog has automatically been set as our data source. So let's just type a query and get some data back. So if I go select star, from, now there's only, I can't remember what it's saying, 900 rows in this data, 998 rows. So we're just gonna bring it all back. Uh, select star from, and then we want the input database. So that's input. Then we want a dot, and then we want two commas, and then, sorry, then we want two quotes, and then it's CSV understood customers for my table name. So just to recap, if no one knows what SQL is, that's the language that we're using, SQL, structured query language. Select star means give me everything from the input database, input database. Dot is then when we go to the next object, which is CSV underscore customers, which is CSV underscore customers. So what this query is saying is give me all data from the CSV customers table in the input database. This happens occasionally with Athena. Um, it's a bug where the wrong query doesn't appear. So if you just refresh after you set up your S3 bucket, it now appears just a bug in the UI that's still there about six months on. Hit run. And you can see we have brought back all that data. Oh, I hit the run button there. I've brought back all that data that we were looking at in the in the first instance. Uh, if you scroll down, probably easier to see. And then you've got a scroll bar left and right as well. So that's a bonus with Athena. I'll put lesson two now um, as a link above again, or and it'll be in the description. So feel free to move on to lesson two and we'll look at actually doing some ETL on this data. We're gonna change it from CSV into Parquet. See you in the next lesson.